Welcome to the European Championship semi-finals of their 10-ball tournament in Antalya, Turkey. You find yourself in the midst of a battle between these two fine young pool players from the Netherlands, Mark Bajstabos and Poland, Mieszko Fortunski. This, a race to seven for, a race to eight, I believe, for a place in the final of the 10-ball championships. Beautiful opening break by Mark Bajstabos, famed for a... Uh, very good breaking skill when it comes to hitting the ball full on, so very useful in 10 ball and 8 ball. Well, and uh, if you leave your cue ball in that midst of the table and make a ball on the break, you have a high percentage chance of getting a shot on the lowest number ball. Now he's just figuring out what kind of angle he wishes on the 3 ball, because I think kind of bringing his cue ball back to where it is now. He might then still brush the 10. Or actually, I think he's decided to cross his cue ball. No, he'll keep it in the center of table. Maybe a bit to the right of center. If his head movement is anything to go by. He could thread the cue ball in between the pink and the green and lay it halfway up the left long rail just below the side pocket let's see what he goes for yeah thought that was a bit more travel but a bit safer all in all and he's back in prime position so now tip below center stun will drift his cue ball 90 degrees over the line that the three ball is going to roll which should bring him in position for the four ball in the side Both these players, pretty smooth operators on a pool table. Very talented. Mieszko Fortunski, part of the army of left-handed pool players whom always seem to be making the game look fairly easy and seem to get down and see the line of the pots very clearly, very quickly. And Mark Bajstabos, just a very talented right-hander. Alright, this 10 ball for a 1-0 lead. First blood, Mike Bajstabosch. Alright, no balls down. And since Miesko also placed his cue ball in the center of table, Mark is able to see the one ball. Just checking if the 7 passes the 9. I doubt it, so we might have a 7-9 combination later on in the rack. Which requires quite a bit of quality and to also keep position on the 7-ball when it makes the 9-ball. And for now, he's going to hit the 8, of course, when making the 1-ball. And his cue ball might turn a little bit to the right after hitting the 8. Not sure. Hope he can stop it for his sake. Maybe a lot of focus on the cue ball hitting the eight ball nicely and therewith missing the exact hit point on the one ball. That is a disappointing second inning for Mark Bajstabosch. But Mieszko will be pretty chuffed to be back at the table so soon. As always, my question to you is, we would like to know where you're watching this from. Let us know in the comments. Let us know where you're watching it from and what situation you're in. You may be uh, at work and actually should be getting some work done, but you've stumbled on this video and just can't click away. Or maybe you're just chilling out at home. I would love to know where you are and uh, let us know any other comments for instance, on who you'd like to see featured on the Billiard Network next feature match. And we'd uh, happily oblige. So, coming around two rails with cue ball towards the black for position on the five in the side. Oh, he wanted to play the five nine. Mm, that's pretty smart. Because with the five 
nine combination, the five will remain near the pocket. The seven nine combination, the seven would drift away from the pocket and it would be hard to keep position. Well, why not make both? All right, so that's pretty smart and heady play. As you can see Miesko wasting no time at all. And this being the semi-finals. And let me tell you a little bit about the route. These two players had to walk to be a part of these fantastic four remaining players in the European Tempo Ten Ball Championships. Now in the first round, Mark Bajstabos ran into the wall that is Ralph Suke and lost that match 9-5. Miesko Fortunski in his first round match ran into Maximilian Lechner, the uh, proving to be extremely solid Austrian players in the last few years. And he lost that match by nine racks to six. Then Mieszko had to play one first loser round match. As we see a beautiful break by Mark. He's got a shot on the one. Although again, the cue ball will be rolling into the rail and might be able to stop it on the eight ball again. He's just checking if the three ball passes. If it does, he would love to be very straight on the three ball because he needs some accuracy there. More accuracy than normal with the four ball being almost in the way. Now, if you can hit the rail and hit the right side, do you think he's trying to get behind or around the eight ball without hitting it or banking it? Nice. Hello. But... Mm, yeah. So beautiful bank, but not enough draw on his cue ball. And this is a tough two to hit. He's trying to come off three rails here, so out of the top right corner, short rail, long rail, but the eight ball's in the way of the natural two rail hit, so he's gonna try to come just past the side pocket nearest to him. And then let the cue ball slide into two. Oh no, direct. No, direct. Okay. Just a bit too wide. Right. But then we automatically feast our eyes on the three ball. And that doesn't look like to have a natural pocket available. Hmm. Is he actually trying to play the cue ball top left spin, come out of the top left corner and come in between the pink and red. Don't snooker yourself behind the pink now. We've all done it. Nice. Beautiful shot. Of course with this opening ball in hand could place the cue ball as ideal as possible but you still have to uh, stroke it and execute it with the right touch or else your cue ball might end up in a complete different spot. I see a six temp combination. I believe in the EPBF WPA rules, the 10 ball doesn't count. So the 10 ball would come back on the spot, I imagine. So would then like to come straight in on the six ten combination because his six ball after hitting the 10 will just drift to the right and lay itself on the Right long rail, just below the center pocket. So yeah, that's quite a nifty position he needs to play here, because also his cue ball coming off of this bottom rail, off of the right rail, doesn't roll into ideal position for many revolutions. So he needs to be applying a very fine amount of touch Okay, never mind the combination. Well, that's the way to do it. Yeah, it's in the realm of good hits or good touches on the cue ball. So, if you can hold this cue ball for a position on the brown. Not really, so he's going to come off the bottom rail and back out.
So uh, Miesko, after he lost that first match against Lechner, had to play a loser's round, and he beat Jepetide from Denmark 9-3. And then there was the winner's, winner's qualification to get amongst the best 64 players where the tournament would continue in a single elimination format. And that's where Mieszko, let me just look at the draw here. Mieszko beat Américo Ferreira from Portugal 9-6. And Mark Baistobos beat Vitali Patsura 9-6. And that is what brought him to the single elimination last 64 stage. As we just watched a pretty nifty break again. You will see that with template racks, no templates on the table, but the balls are knocked in prior to the tournament. So they have a template. And you will hear David Morris prior to, prior to the tournament starting, giving all tables, every ball, about three very loud knocks to make small indentations in the cloth. And then you're able to rack the balls by just rolling the balls into the indentations. Throughout the tournament, that might slightly move also with table cleaners brushing the table. The, the cloth might move ever so slightly, so some of the tables might not feature a perfect rack anymore, but most of them do, and it definitely speeds up the racking process. And I like it as well because you don't have a piece of plastic laying on the table, which, as we all know, might sometimes cause an object or cue ball to uh, roll over it and then roll back on itself when it hits the template. And that looks a bit silly. All right, so past the center point of the table for a position on the six in the side. A bit short in that respect. And this is not ideal because he would like to, he can easily play the three rail position, but because of his angle on the six, he's going to go pretty deep onto the first rail, which makes his three rail figure wider, and he's almost going to scratch in the corner, so it would have to stop his cue ball very clearly. He could draw it one rail straight into the bottom rail off the six, and then back up with the with a very precise amount of right spin, both of which not easy at all. Well, if you have a stroke like that, it's a beautiful result there. Did none of the two things I sketched, but uh, came out smelling of roses. So tip a right spin to come straight out of the bottom rail, or tip a left spin to come right spinning out of that bottom rail. My predictions are well off here in the first few racks. Mieszko Fortunski takes a 3-1 lead. And that, you know, might very be very important at the end. So Mark needs to get back to winning ways. I mean, look at that break. But too much topspin on his cue ball. And then, besides him breaking so hard and making wild balls, the two balls rack below the one ball that usually track towards the side. If you give your cue ball too much topspin, they usually don't come near. If you give your cue ball a bit of too much draw, then actually they do still track very much towards the respective side pockets. Anyway, made a ball. He's got a tester on the one ball though. His cue ball is going to come two rails towards the two. No automatic position. Will he slow roll this or roll it for 210 combination? Considerably hit too much of that one ball. Now, can Miesco make this? I think he can. So, not the best start after Mark ran the first rack, but then remember, missed that open one ball. And from there on, has made two mistakes made a bank and snookered himself. This miss. So Mieszko could take over and take a 4-1 lead. Ooh, looked almost like a diamond table with deep slates. I thought that would have dropped. Now, 
What do we see ahead of this rack? Is Mark going to jump this? Yeah. So a number of ways you could get position. You could get position on the two in the top left corner. You could play cannon onto the ten. You could play a two ten combination. As long as you don't snooker yourself, you've got a shot most likely. Mm, that's pretty far away. <laughs> Although he's got a shot. Hmm, interesting to see what he will do here. Because you don't want to. Can easily make the two ten carom, but then he's going to snooker himself on the two ball, which is going to roll towards the brown. Decided for none of the attacking options. That's pretty, you know, with the pocket available for the 10 and for the 2. That's showing some patience. Although, when playing a safety, you do let your opponent back to the table, and therefore he's got a chance to, you know, maybe fluke in the 2, maybe hit the 2 and leave you snookered. You never know. So once they hit a specific side of the two ball so that the both balls can find distance, but hit the two ball pretty fat. And neither of that happened. Two doesn't pass the three. Could make it in the side, but that would make his cue ball float towards the yellow nine ball. So would have to avoid that and then come back up table can put draw on to draw it behind the one behind the nine ball right, showing patience again and that's a better safety because the two balls out into the middle of the table so he's got only about uh, just less than three balls width to hit this two ball Can still go off the natural angle but has to apply a certain amount of right spin to create the angle good hit by Miesco. but mark's got his shot i think i think the nine's not in the way of the potting angle three goes into the side but what about that 410 is that still a combination or does the four even go past the brown? Yeah, I might be able to cannon the or carom the ten off the four, but has to hit the four ball really thick and follow his cue ball through and hit the 10 and make that which makes his four ball a bit more difficult to control Ten ball side. so all to play for here in rack number five, in which Mark needs to close the gap because a 4-1 deficit in a race to eight is going to be hard to overcome in alternate breaking fashion. The referee with his glove and stopwatch. See, yeah, hitting that four thick was hard to play position on. So the 10 ball combination doesn't win you the game. It merely gives you the right to play on. I mean, cutting this four ball in, is that, or hitting the, banking the four back up table, spinning your cue ball behind the six, find cover behind the six ten. I think that's the way to go. Yeah. It's a good safety again. So three good safeties by Mark, although you would expect Mieszko to hit this. And out of three kicks, I mean, it's a, by now a good percentage that he might get 
a favorable roll and uh, so mark with chances but having to give back table time to Mieszko and there we go no cover but big test on this four ball you'd expect him to try to cut it in the top left what else would you do? Viewers, think along with me here. You could play safe and almost split the balls and put the, so hit the four ball, about three quarter ball on the right side from where Mark is looking, and split the balls, but that's just a containing safety. Oh, That was, you know, he could have hit that six in a lot of different ways and not follow this cue ball into the pocket. But, you know, it was a bit of a wild cue ball, wasn't it? And then you still risking things. So, Mieszko with a fairly straightforward chance to try to take a 4-1 lead. Wants to keep, well, could keep various angles on the eight ball, but about... 20 degrees would be ideal to keep it a very doable pot and also make his cue ball maneuverable back to the center of table for position on the nine. And that is about 20 degrees, isn't it? You'll see the referee lifting his white glove into the sky with the stopwatch. That means that the 30 second, that the players are allowed to in between shots before they have to take the next one that means time starts again it's just more for the referees to uh, not forget to press the stopwatch for the next 30 second period so this 10 ball for a 4-1 lead are things looking ominous for Mark Beisterbosch already or can he make a comeback we will find out now on this next break Check out the two balls racked below the one ball. Those are the balls that go in most regularly, or the two corner balls travel four rails. But let's check the orange and red. There goes red. And that's all you need, really. So those are the two balls that you can try to make regularly. The rest would be pretty wild. Same as an eight ball. If you play eight ball, also the two balls racked below the first ball. If you hit them fairly square from somewhere around the center of table, those two balls track towards the respective side pockets. All right, so Mieszko keeping control. Got a shot on the one. This might be the most difficult shot he plays this whole rack. And that is not good enough position, but he's going to have to handle it. Could bank the four and play safe, stick his cue ball behind the ten. But if you're breaking and you made a ball and you've got a shot on the one and you made your opening shot, it's so hard to then pull on the brakes and you know and try to halt yourself and play safe. So and this is a very doable pot. I think you should go for it also because of the fact if you play safe, there is a chance a player might still hit the ball and get away with it. Now, the seven ball, I think, is potable. I think his cue ball might graze the nine ball after he makes the seven ball. It's just looking ahead. But the eight is also an open position on the table, so she will, oh, should always get a shot. Don't yet know how easy it will be. So he's just walking around to look at the ideal line. If he's just off straight, he might be able to avoid hitting the nine. If he lays his cue ball on the left rail, it might be inevitable hitting the nine. Yeah, I think he's got room. You just have to be aware of situations, but I think in this case, he's got enough room not to hit the eight ball. So center table position again. Is probably what we'll see for the next two shots. 
So now he's kept the angle exactly the other way. So if he if he would have kept center table position, he would have the exact angle, but then the the mirror version of it. Pretty good. But still with these draw stock shots, you know, the brief is pretty simple, but to control your cue ball draw, it's not always easy. But these players, of course, pretty adept. So 5-1 lead, inevitable. Mieszka Fortunski three games away from a place in the final. Let me tell you what else happened in the last 64 with their roots. Um, let me just find them in the draw. Mark Bajstabos beat Tomasz Kaplan, nine racks to three. And Mieszko Fortunski played Francesco Candela and beat him 9-7. On to the last 32. Let me just check out this rack. There's a shot on the one. Anyway, let me just go back to the draw. On to the last 32. Mieszko beat Andreas Madsen from Denmark 9-7. Mark Bajstabos beat where is he at in the draw I can't find him okay back to the match at hand I'm just looking at the draw I still can't find it so what would you do here as a player I mean, had he been able to snooker him behind the 6-7, I think he would have not given the shot back. So with a push out, you usually like to create as much distance, first of all, as possible. Cue ball on the rail is pretty good, so that players are unable to add any of the lower half tip positions to the cue ball. looks like he can okay so maybe he can't hit the one ball on the right side at all I mean you could cut it and try to find cover behind the 310 but he would be exposing the one ball to the top right corner pocket Whew. I mean that is pretty nifty and this one a definite hit but how do you get away with it so players are just trying to imagine you know hitting it full hitting it on the right side hitting it on the left side what could give them the most roots to be happy with the after result soft kick yeah that was always a very difficult thing to do maybe Efren would be pretty good at those, or probably. So Mark with a bit of table control, but not yet an easy one ball. So I think he might play safe again. Stick his cue ball against the brown seven. And try to cut off as many escape routes as he can. Ooh, hello. Ooh, that two ball saved him there, because he got snooker. He got Found cover nor behind the seven nor behind the six. So Mark not doing too well actually in from the first game onwards. pretty open but doesn't want to play the three four combination but to play the three in the other right corner pocket needs a lot of top left spin on his cue ball and about the results um, that I sketched for you 
No wonder I couldn't find Mark Bashabos in the last 16 because I was checking out the nine ball draw. Yeah, there you go. Anyway, back to the match at hand. I think he's gonna. I think he's favored to make it. Oh, overcut the two ball. That was difficult to do. Finally, the chance for Mark with an open table. Things can't really get worse for Mark, so I think we'll see him play pretty faultless pool, I think, in the next few racks. I have a feeling he's, uh, of course, finds himself at a severe deficit, but has still, like Mieszko, has won quite a few matches along this way, so it's definitely warmed up in the 10 ball tournament and should be high in confidence because of the previous scalps in the 10 ball tournament so i'm expecting good things maybe a bit tidy up on the break don't just slam it but because it could even take about 10 20 percent off and still make the balls in the side and almost play position on the one ball like shane does Yeah, you could say both these players definitely part of the top 20 of European players but both players still looking to become part of the yeah the true elite of Europe you know Joshua Filler Jason Shaw I guess the Moscone team members that's what a lot of players are going for you could say Kazakis kind of belongs there but goes dips in and out that elite all right so he's got a shot on the one left-hander big lean over the table or is he going to use the rest we we'll want to add either a lot of left spin or right spin to get position on the two ball right spin it is straighten out his cue ball off the rail that's nice just looking ahead the four ball the pink four can go into the side or each corner I think he might put the five being in the center of table quite a few options here put his cue ball in such a spot he can't even cut this three ball in oh look he almost wants to slam the cue on the table i think he can cut this in it's about 85 degree cut but sometimes when you're cutting these balls your three ball kind of first makes a little forward movement because you're you're hitting it from behind and that might make it hit the knuckle let's see a lot of left spin to flick the three ball even more all right, in the end, not much of a problem. Yeah, and with this alternate break format, even if Mark breaks and runs out all of his breaks, if Mieszko does something similar on his breaks, there's no way that Mark can win this match anymore. He's fallen too far behind and by his own doing to be honest still still not out of the woods yet here although you put a lot of money on a quality player like Mishko to run out this rack
So only two racks away from a place in the final, which I think would be his first 10 ball final. Not 100% sure. All right, Mark Beister was to break. Look at the two balls behind the one ball and the three and four going around the table. Seven ball, found gravity, well, made two wild balls, got, got a shot on the one, this is ideal. Keep about a 45 degree angle on the two ball to make it natural for position on the pink four. We'd love to be straight. Because let's say, if he has a straight and shot on the four ball, that would mean by making the four, he would have a kind of a shot on the five ball. And sometimes there has to be a special reason to forego on an object ball that gives you automatic position to get a better position elsewhere. But I think he might choose to keep a 45, 40 degree angle on the four ball and cross the table. Yeah. He's going to cross the table. Kind of drawing his cue ball with bottom right towards this side pocket nearest to us. Okay, so pretty swift reply so far by Mike Burst, Mark Beisterboss. Really dominated the break there. Mieszko can keep control of his cue ball on the break, make a ball on the break, which is with these tap racks or template racks with 10 ball is almost, almost a given, almost like racking the one on the spot in nine ball. Look at the brown seven, red three. Red three went, although the one ball is not gonna act to Mieszko's liking. So what to do? First, always look if you can attack, whether it mean a bank, could bank the cue ball past the five, but position on the two is too difficult, it's too risky. Can bank the one towards that where I suggested behind the seven and find cover but with the cue ball behind the eight ten. The 810 could form a pretty wide wall of balls. Yeah, good one. Thing here is though that players will hit the ball by jumping it or by kicking it. And quite a few balls on the table left to either find full or part cover on. Or just put both balls in such a position that they're not potable. So players would love to play safety where it's really a tough task for the opposing players to hit the ball. Here you would expect Mark to hit the ball about 19 out of 20 tries. So it's call shot game, so Mark calling the one ball in the side pocket, or calling the five actually. Or four. All right, so gave up control, but no pocket for this one ball. So what do you do here? Send the one ball to a six, cue ball behind the brown seven. Mm. Yeah, nice one. Jumpable though. And that pocket's not too far away from the one ball. One ball. 
kind of expecting him to make this one. Yeah, nice one. Minimal jump shot, minimal speed. Looked like he was very confident about making that one. All right. Will this be the start of the comeback by Mark? Needs to win. What is it? Needs to win five out of the next six games to win this semi-final. Which he's an underdog to do, of course, in alternate break format. But stranger things have happened out at sea than somebody coming back from a 6-3 deficit in a race to 8, even though it's alternate break. So Mark Beisterbosch, a firm part of the uh, generation of pool players, that uh, came along after Alex Laley, after Nick Vandenberg, after Niels Fein. I remember them being in the junior team, or them, them being Mark Bajstebosch and Marco Teutscher, who actually started to play pool in the same pool hall in Snooker and Pool Center, Wunzel in Eindhoven. They're very good motivation or what do you call it very good in in-house team leagues in-house coaching that uh, got quite a, quite a few kids through to the junior ranks but yeah you would say mark bastard and marco torture the most famous exponents after the golden generation of fine Lely and vandenberg and the Polish, as we all know, have got like an army of players that all kind of belong to the European sub-top, you would say. So, you know, the, after the top five or something within the top 25. But you have to say, we're still waiting for that first Polish player to win a true major. So a US Open a um, China Open World Championship. You know, they win Euro Tours. And they're always there or thereabouts in the latter stages of tournaments, or not they, as in a few of them are all, you always kind of like see like three Polish players in the last 16. But then too often you see by the semi finals, they've all got beat. I think the most promising player from Poland for the last few years and he's proving it now is Viktor Zielinski who is I think the most talented of all of them and he's got this singular style and it looks like to have a pretty set mind frame to make it all the way to the top here though his fellow countryman Mieszko Fortunski in the current action the world so the european 10 ball semi-final and he's doing pretty well making very few mistakes let's see what mark does sledgehammer break beautiful cue ball cue ball control Ooh, cue ball was placed in the center got kicked hit both posts and still survived <laughs> you see mieszko there Smiling a little bit. He's got to be happy with his 7-3 lead. Knows he's going to break at least one, two, three, <laughs> at least three more times. Should it get to Hill Hill though? It's Mark's break. Is it? Anyway, never mind. We'll think about that when we get there. What to do here? Play the one onto the four? Cue ball onto the four? None of those things. Ooh, wild bank. I don't know about that one. Hmm. Yeah, maybe the combination or cannon onto the pink four wasn't as 
natural as I thought it would be. Mieszko with a chance. These seven balls for a place in the final and a chance to grab the gold medal. Such a prestigious tournament, the European Championships in the mind of European pool players will have all played these championships throughout their career either in a junior and or in a senior role for their respective national teams and such a good tournament where you play 10 ball, 8 ball, straight pool, 9 ball all in the space of 10 days so you play a lot of matches a lot of ups and downs but also a lot of new friendships created with players from about 25 different countries it's really a great tournament. Bit minimal angle on this six ball. And the seven doesn't pass the black eight, so needs to stun this seven ball a little bit to create the angle and movement with the cue ball. Top left, bottom right. The opposite thing. Right, final thing for Mieszko to do is guide his cue ball after the eight ball towards the right side pocket, but not in the right side pocket. For his, so the last bit of quality required coming up right here. But these pretty standard shots for these quality players. And you'd have to say a few missed opportunities from Mark Beisterbosch didn't make him the opponent that is so tough to beat and gives Mieszko Fortunski a chance to make his 8th 10 ball to qualify for the final and he's in with a shout to be the European 10 ball champion. All right, thank you for watching. My name is Enrico. Have a look through our library of other feature matches. Let us know any comments and uh, we will see you soon. Ciao.